So we're looking at scatter plots here to display by variant numerical data. You've done this before, so we're going to be able to jump through it really, really quickly. Example. So here's our data set. We've got 10 students here, and this is their maths mark, and this is how many hours of homework they did in a week. Now, you can see that these are both numerical data sets, and to compare those two numerical data sets, we're going to create a scatter plot. And we're going to place it on this X and Y axis. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is, which is the explanatory variable and which is the response variable? Are they doing homework because they're getting these marks, or are they getting these marks because they're doing the homework? And hopefully you can see that hours of homework is the explanatory variable. Okay, this is the thing that explains this. And the maths mark is responding to, it's the response variable here. And when it comes to doing our scatter plot, we always put our expected variable on the x axis, or sorry, explanatory variable on the x axis, and we always put our response variable on the y axis. Very important to make sure that we're doing that right. So now I've got those labels here, now we need to consider our scale. Now, the largest number of homework is here is 8, so I'm going to split this from uh, 0 to 8 here. Alright, a little bit small, but you can see it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and now I'm going to look at the maths mark. It goes all the way up to 92, so I'm going to go all the way up to 100 here, and the lowest maths mark here is uh, 35, so what I might do is do one of these little squiggly lines here. The little squiggly line means that I'm going to be missing the start. I'm not going to start from zero. I'm going to start from some other number. In this case, I'm going to start from 30 and go 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So now that we've done that, it's just a matter of placing our dots. So we look at our first student here, um, 372. So that means they've done three hours of work, homework, and they got a mark of 72. And we just put a dot there. Okay. 9, 92 and 8, 8 hours of work, 92 mark, 8 hours, 92, right over here-ish. Obviously, you'll probably have some graph paper or something, so you can be more accurate. Uh, I'm going to place one more dot here, 335, 335, okay. Now, you can see these two dots are directly um, below each other. Doesn't matter, we can put as many up directly below each other. We just follow the data, we just fill it all in. Um, all right, I'm going to keep filling this stuff in. All right, that's it. I'm pretty much done here. You can see I've got my dots here. You can see generally, and this is a, a subject for another video, but you can see generally the more homework a person does, the better their mark is. Now, obviously, uh, there are some outliers like oh, this guy here. Uh, he only did three hours of homework and he got a mark of 72. But generally speaking, there's kind of a trend upwards. But again, that's a subject for another video. Last thing I really need is a title here. And probably the only thing you really need to remember, the thing that's very important here, is when you do this, check your question, look for what the explanatory variable is and put it on the x-axis, look for what your response variable is and put it on your y-axis. If you flip those, your teacher's going to get a little bit upset, you're going to get a little x on your uh, exam question. So make sure that you understand which one's which and you put the explanatory on the bottom.